I I don't know where I want to start this video. I've tried recording it a couple times and I always get completely off track, but I want to talk about Vanguard and how it could be a better game. I was going to put this off until I finished the Atomic Camel Grind because the Atomic Camel Grind is what I'm focusing on right now. But with how the game is right now and where the community's at, I do want to sit down and share my opinions. This video is inspired off of a lot of videos that I've seen from Jay Bowen and the Act Man and other commentary channels throughout the community sharing their opinions on the game. I don't want to be overly negative or unrealistically positive with the game. I just want to be honest of where I'm at with the game right now. The game's good and I'm having a lot of fun with the game, but it could be better because there are definite moments of Oh my god, why is this in the game, or why is this like this? As always, let me know in the comment section down below where you guys are at and share your opinions as well. Keep in mind that we're going to try and keep the comment section a little civil today. The game's fresh, and a lot of people are going to have a lot of different opinions on it. There's people that like the game because it's in a World War II setting, and there's people that hate the game because it's in a World War II setting. And I'm only going to focus on mainly campaign and multiplayer because those are what I've played. I still haven't touched the zombies yet and I want to save the zombies for an entire video in itself because that's a whole other beast to tackle. But let's start off with multiplayer. Out of the last couple Call of Duties in the Warzone era of Call of Duty, and for those that don't know what that is, personally for me, I break down Call of Duty into three eras. The Golden Era, which is the beginning of COD until Black Ops 2, where the community basically universally loved Call of Duty and there was barely anything that Call of Duty could ever do wrong. And then there was the experimental era of COD from Ghosts to Black Ops 4, where Call of Duty kind of lost its identity and was just doing whatever was popular in the gaming scene at the time, whether that was operators or advanced movement. That's just what Call of Duty did then. And then I would I would consider the current modern era of Call of Duty the Warzone era, because every Call of Duty has been tied into Warzone from Modern Warfare 2019 on, with which also works out perfectly because the golden era was the PS3, the experimental era was the ps4 and then the the warzone era was the ps5 so it also fits in with the consoles as well and those eras but anyway getting back on topic out of the current era vanguard's the best multiplayer it improves upon everything that cold war and modern warfare did wrong and it does what those games should have done it has a fast-paced multiplayer like cold war with fun maps and fast-paced maps but Cold War didn't have the best movement. So Vanguard took the best movement from Modern Warfare 2019 and improved upon it. And overall, the gameplay and the movement is amazing in the game. I think it's the most polished movement that Call of Duty's ever had. And the map design is fantastic, and I've been enjoying the maps, and the multiplayer overall has been fantastic. The only thing I don't like about the multiplayer is the bugs, the SBMM, and then I guess two maps i don't like berlin and sub pens but sometimes i'll enjoy them but majority of the times i don't like those maps but the issues sometimes can outweigh the positives of the game i'm a camel grinder and a lot of people know that and one thing that really sucks in the game is how many bugs there are with guns right now and camos aren't tracking properly and the progression just takes way too long and the game's frustrating sbmm will kick you when you're down for those that don't know, SBMM is working a little bit different this year. SBMM takes your five previous games that you've played and will put you into skill-based matchmaking for your next five based off of how you did in those previous five. So it goes in like sectors of five. So your first five games dictate the skill-based matchmaking that your next five games are going to be in. But this, this five games that you are about to play will dictate your next five. So it's kind of like peaks and valleys. If you do really well in your first five games, skill-based matchmaking will pin you up against super sweaty tryhards in your second set of five games, and you'll get absolutely dogged on in your second set of five games. So your third set of five games will be against weaker players. And it's just, it kind of sucks because knowing that this year, I always know that second set of five games or whatever set of five games I have after doing really well is just going to be extremely boring and you just have to sit and play through it because you're not going to get out of that skill-based matchmaking until it registers you have five new games to base your skill-based matchmaking off of. And that's what the gameplay in the background is. 
I had a previous five shitty games where I got dunked on the entire time, and then all of a sudden in this game, I'm against bots and like low level free to play weekend players where I almost dropped two nukes. I think once I was three off of a nuke, and then the second time I was like six off of a nuke, or it might be vice versa. But it makes the multiplayer very inconsistent because you'll have good games and you'll have bad games, but they're like in sections of five. So you'll have five good games and then five bad games. Uh, of course, if you're in a playlist like Shoot House, or I guess, what is it? Ship House 24-7, where it's Shipment and sh uh, Das House. I almost said Shoot House. I'm so like hardwired from Modern Warfare 2019 that it's Shoot the Ship in my head still, but the oh my god i forgot what it was called again like i just went to ship house oh it's ship house okay i'm stupid anyway unless you're playing in a chaotic game like that or a playlist like that you won't notice skill based matchmaking as much but you definitely still will i do really love the combat pacing this year i've been playing blitz pretty much 24 7. it makes the game fast paced and chaotic the entire time which is exactly how i like call of duty but I also love how it gives us the option to play tactical or assault as well. Uh, the only issue that I've had and a lot of people have had is sometimes the combat pacing doesn't put you into a match of where you want to be. And one thing that I also really want in the game and with combat pacing and just playlists in general is when there's a playlist in core, the exact same playlist should be in hardcore. For example, the ship house playlist is only in core. You can only play core. There's no option to play it in hardcore. I still haven't seen shipment in hardcore yet, and I've pretty much been playing hardcore domination working on the LMGs exclusively within the past couple of days, and I've seen Das House, but I haven't seen shipment. So it'd be nice if they added some kind of balance to that where you could see it in hardcore as well. I know most people asking for that are camel grinders who want to play hardcore shipment to get camels like crazy fast um but there are some people that want to play hardcore exclusively on those maps so it would just be nice to see in the game because more options literally never hurt anyone one of my biggest issues in vanguard and how it could be so much better than it actually is is the character and the theme of the game it's a world war ii era call of duty but it doesn't feel like world war ii the characters are pretty one-dimensional and don't bring a lot to the table. Campaign is very weak. It's weak storytelling. And I actually want to jump into that because it also leeches into multiplayer as well. Because forever now, Call of Duty has always been influenced by its campaign. So the campaign pretty much sets the tone for the multiplayer. When you look at multiplayers like... Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 2019 and I guess not even Modern Warfare 2019 but just the older Call of Duties and the factions that you had. I'll use this example every time I talk about it but it's the Modern Warfare 2 announcers and how many different versions of callouts you could hear like when you heard enemy AC-130 above depending on what faction you were playing as that actually brought chills up your spine and it brought some character to the game. Vanguard doesn't have that and it feels like they're trying to be politically correct which sucks because spoiler alert I don't give a fuck if there is political correctness in a Call of Duty game or not. I wanted to tell a good story and to be fun to play. And I also, for those games that are World War II based and based off of real history, I want them to be historically accurate to some extent. I don't care about the weaponsmith and the gunsmith being realistic. Yeah, I know straight up that a lot of those attachments aren't real and the guns wouldn't function with half of those attachments. But I can suspend my disbelief for... The attachments if they're realistic enough and so far vanguard's attachments have been extremely realistic for the era i know a lot of people are really upset that you can put like a drum mag on the stg like people are driven crazy because that's a thing that type of realism i don't care about the realism i care about is how the story is told we're seeing a a sem a somewhat we're seeing a somewhat fictional story told within Vanguard, where the campaign is actually trying to hunt down Hitler's successor at the end of the war and trying to stop the Nazis from furthering progression even after the war is over, which is really cool and really intriguing. But it seems like there's no risk or no emotion in the campaign. And I know a lot of people want the swastika to be represented in a World War II game for realism, but 
I kind of want the swastika to be in the game for a different reason. When I see the swastika myself personally, I am hit with so many emotions, and we're about to get kind of serious. When I see that symbol, I think about the history behind that symbol. I think about how that symbol has so much evil behind it and so much dread and terror and negativity. When I see that symbol, I feel emotions, emotions that I can't even describe through words because it's almost an overwhelming emotion that I feel when I see that symbol. That symbol has so much behind it. And when I think of it, it almost brings emotion that you can't find anywhere else. So when you take that symbol away in a World War II game, you also take away a lot of emotion that that symbol has. And symbolism is a huge thing in storytelling and in media. You can still tell a story with the Iron Cross replacing the swastika and how the Nazis were evil, but that symbol almost adds that extra touch. In the Vanguard campaign, it's all good and fun to kill the Nazis and win the war and kind of defeat the evil in quite literal terms. But there's just not a whole lot of emotion in the story. And with the characters and the cast that they have, their Sledgehammer straight up themselves on Twitter has said, uh, not Sledgehammer's official account, but one of Sledgehammer's community managers on Twitter tweeted out, how do you like our diverse cast of characters in Vanguard? And that just goes to show that Sledgehammer's focus with Vanguard wasn't to be a game where it tells a good World War II story or to be a game that's historically accurate. They were focusing on telling a story that was inclusive and politically correct for the current era we live in. I have nothing against diversity and inclusivity, but when you're talking about World War II, one of the greatest human conflicts that has shaped modern society, you have to have some realism and you have to be realistic. I don't care in media if a story is told by all females or all minorities. I don't care who has a job position as long as they're qualified and the most qualified, regardless of their background, their race, their gender, I don't care. Tell a good story. I don't care who has the position. But with Vanguard and a World War II game, I want the story to be pretty realistic for what we saw. I have no issues with World War II stories being told through the perspectives of females or minorities because there were females and minorities that fought during the war. Yeah, the majority of soldiers were white males, but it would be super cool and super interesting to see the real stories of these soldiers who fought in World War II that faced oppression not only by the Nazis, but by the people that they fought beside and the oppression they faced on their own, like in their own military. It would be super cool to see that through their perspective and have those stories told. Imagine Vanguard's campaign and just Vanguard as a game in general if we had that perspective told to us in a pretty accurate way, not in a way where it was trying to be like, oh, anyone can pick up and play Vanguard and be represented in it. I think that's one thing that Call of Duty is so scared to do these days is to be different and tell a story that might make people uncomfortable. Look at No Russian from Modern Warfare 2. That campaign mission went viral because of the story that it told. And the reason that No Russian was so impactful back then was because it was serious. Terrorism still is an issue, and it was an issue even back then. So when you played that campaign mission, it was, oh my god, I have so many emotions that are being brought out right now because this is a real issue. And we saw that with Modern Warfare 2019 with, I don't remember what mission it was, but it was the mission where you were in England and you were going through like the apartments and trying to take out the whatever terrorist organization was in that game. Imagine if we saw that in a World War II game current in like the current modern era. Imagine the storytelling and the potential that you have with doing that. 
but you take that all away when you remove the swastika and you remove the severity of the Nazi party. I think everyone knows the Nazis are bad, but you could show how truly evil they are in specific missions. You could show how people were treated and how minorities and females were treated back then by having specific characters share their stories and experience things that no one would ever think happened in World War II. You have so much potential to create a game that's not only realistic, but an incredible story. And you can Google hundreds of thousands of World War II stories of people that fought both on the Nazi side and the Allied side. There were Nazi soldiers that were fighting for the Nazis that were pretty much forced to because if they didn't, they would go to death camps or they would be straight up killed because that's how evil Nazi Germany was. You could tell a story from the perspective of a Nazi soldier who is trying to break free from his superiors and break free from what was going on and all the horrible things that happened. But Vanguard focused on inclusivity this year and focused on political correctness almost, what is it, 80 years after the war actually happened. So I understand completely why a lot of people are getting upset at Vanguard for not being realistic in that sense. But from my perspective, it just takes away from the impact that the game could have on the player. Vanguard's going to be an extremely forgettable game once it's over and once we get next year's Call of Duty. No one's going to think back at the Vanguard campaign and be like, whoa, that had an impact on the players. To this day, the no Russian mission is still having impacts on players. It is still brought up time and time again. That shows good storytelling and that shows the potential of what they could do. Sure, would social justice warriors get upset if you showed some hard truths about World War II? Obviously. God, you could tell them it's seven degrees outside and they'll find a way to get upset. They'll get upset because you didn't use Fahrenheit over Celsius or something stupid. At the end of the day, Vanguard has so much potential to be an incredible game. Campaign's pretty much a lost cause because the campaign's already done and you can't really rewrite a campaign. Where Vanguard has hope is by smoothing out and ironing the multiplayer and making that experience the best it can be with the lack of character because my team versus enemy team is obviously World War II, right? Like, like our team, my team fought against their team. I have no idea who their team is. I'm using this from Act Man. But yeah, it's just... It has potential. I'm having a lot of fun with the game. It just it, it feels like there's a huge piece of the puzzle missing within Vanguard, and I can't quite narrow it down exactly. But uh, that's where I stand with the game. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I'm about to head out. There's one. I'll see you guys in the next one.